Power Wave. Welcome to another week of online service. I hope you guys have had a great week. Let's prepare our hearts and our Bibles so that we can really worship and listen to his word today. Let's start with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell the third day. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father God, we thank you for today that we can come before you to worship and praise your name. We pray that your spirit will cover our place, the place where we are right now. And also as we start our service, we ask for your guidance and we ask for your presence to fill every each one of us, Lord. Even though we are gathering in online, uh, come and fill our hearts and help us to know that this is the service and we are worshiping the Almighty God right now. So help us to come as your worshiper and help us come as your children, Lord. We praise your name and we lift your name up right now. So we just pray that you would take all the control and lead us with your guidance and be with us until the end of the service. And we pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord you have told me to say, it is well.
Welcome PowerWave to the service. So today we will be looking at Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 to 6. So here, finally, 25 years after God first promised that he would make uh, Abraham into a great nation and give Isaac to him. And this scene in Genesis 22, we can see that Isaac was born and now he grew up and became a boy. And after the long time of waiting, Abraham and Sarah would have thought that by now God's promise has been fulfilled and that's through Isaac. But today's passage tells us about a totally different message. To so hear, God will put Abraham to the test by asking him to sacrifice his own son Isaac and command him to take Isaac, whom he loves, to the Mount of Moriah. And among the several events of Abraham's life, today's passage is the climax of his story. So it tells us about the test that God gives and the response of Abraham. So we'll be looking at why God will test someone and how should we respond through it. And living in the faith does require us to let things down before God. And God's test is not like the one that we have in our society or in our culture. So I will share about the nature of God's test and His purpose that's included in His test. And along with that, uh, I will share about uh, the response that we can learn from Abraham, which also extends to our life as well today. So let's pray before we move on. Father God, we thank you for today that we can come, uh, even though it's by online, we're here to listen to your message. So as we come, we pray that you will uh, give us your message, your word, that we can take it into our life, that we can learn from it, that we can hear more about you, and we can experience who you are, and we can learn how to live with your word as your children in this world. So we pray that you will guide us, you will lead us, and you give us your wisdom and your strength. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So let's read today's passage first. So it's from book of Genesis chapter 22, from verse 1 to 6. Let's read together. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together. So the beginning of this uh, story, beginning of our main passage today, introduces the time when all this has taken place. And um, actually it's really important because knowing when it has happened helps us to understand uh, what it actually means to get a test from God and how Abraham could respond just as he did. So in NIV translation, which we just read, it says, Sometime later, at verse 1. But in other translation, we can find out that it's described as after these things. So because of that, because it says after these things, some people misunderstand uh, that this phrase is describing that Genesis 22 is the event that just occurred, just happened uh, straight after the event in Genesis 21, the previous chapter. But when it says after these things, um, these things here, 
doesn't refer only to Genesis 21, but it actually referring to all the journey that Abraham had taken since he received the promise. And that's from uh, Genesis 12. And for us, uh, the time matters. And it's because we always plan and assume when things were going to happen according to our plan and according to our standards. And we want things to happen as we expected. And that's especially when it's something that we promised uh, to receive. And that's why we sometimes make mistakes. When we are meant to wait, uh, we can see that in Abraham's life as well. So he made several mistakes. He tried to adopt a non-relative boy to make him the heir for his house, while God actually told Abraham that the son from Sarah will be the heir. And after that, after a few years later, he now tries to get a son from different women uh, as he couldn't wait longer and Sarah was getting older. And also when they were 99, so after a few years later, when God comes to them and tells them that Sarah was going to give a birth to a boy, they even laughed at God. So these were the mistakes that Abraham and Sarah had made because they were expecting the promise to be fulfilled in their time, in the time that they expected. But what we should really know and be sensitive is God's time. And in the Bible, when it describes about the time when God actively involves into someone's life or into a specific event, it uses the word a kairos, which, which means time, but also it means at that moment, a specific moment when God works. And this word kairos is only used for God. There is another word which is called chronos for time, and this is what we used for human, just our, uh, ordinary usage of time. But when it describes uh, the time that God works, it always used a word kairos. So it's the kairos, it's God's time when God moves and works in our life in His way. And here, when we look at the first verse, again, when God came to Abraham, testing him, he had his own purpose. God had his uh, plan for Ab Abraham. So he's moving in his time after these things. And because of the culture and what we have learned in our society, when we hear a word test or testing, we automatically think the concept of passing and failing. So it makes us to think that the purpose of God testing Abraham was to uh, see whether Abraham was going to pass or fail. But when we look at the origin of the Hebrew word for test, it means something different. So here the word test can be also interpreted as to see or to confirm and also to prove. So when God tests, when God comes to test Abraham, it's not to pass or fail someone, but it's to see where he's at, where the person is at. So it's our opportunity to prove ourselves about our faith. So God does not, so God doesn't test to lead people towards failure, but he tests to give his people the opportunity to prove the quality of their faith. And that's what God is doing for Abraham as well. So God's intention is to test us, to place affliction in our lives, to place something that we didn't expect because that produced endurance, which also produces character and which lead us to the hope that we have in God. It's difficult to see in that moment, but God's tests are for our benefit. It's for our good. So they grow us, they strengthen us, and give us the confidence that we need to persevere through the future difficulties, future tests. We might go through different afflictions, but one thing that we all need to know 
is that through the time we draw more closer to God, also one day when we look back, we will eventually understand why God has led us as He did. And this becomes our confidence and our foundation of our trust for God. And that's including in current um, afflictions as well. So there will be time when we confront these circumstances to prove our faith. And here, Abraham confronts that time. So after all these things, which refer to 25 years of waiting, Abraham learned to lay down his will and let God work in his life. And as the result, he receives the son, Isaac, the fulfillment of God's promise. However, here God comes again and commands Abraham to offer Isaac as a burnt offering, as a burnt sacrifice. But contrasting to what Abraham does in the past, um, here he listens to God, although it sounded different to his own expectation. So when we look at this story, Abraham did not just gave up his beloved son, but he also gave up his own will, his own plan, his own expectation, and let God work in his life. And in the past, Abraham tried to work things out in his own way. But here, in Genesis 22, here he responds in faith, trusting God that God is working according to his perfect will, even though what God asked for looks incomprehensible. So here in Genesis 22, when God is testing him, Abraham proves his faith and his trust for God. Then here is the question, how? How could Abraham obey to such command, which seems absurd? Abraham kept on making mistakes. If you look at his past, if you read from Genesis 12, when he received the initial promise, and if you look uh, through each chapter, we can see the failures that Abraham makes. We can see the mistakes that Abraham makes before God. But here in Genesis 22, he obeys in God's commandments. What was different here? How could Abraham sacrifice his beloved son? The son that, that was the sign for the fulfillment of God's promise. And the answer is because Abraham had learned this one thing, which I also explained uh, last week in my message. So let's read Genesis uh, chapter 21, which is the previous chapter, from verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. And Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. In the message translation, it says like this, God visited Sarah exactly as he said he would. God did to Sarah what he promised. Sarah became pregnant and gave Abraham a son in his old age. And at the very time God had set. So from these verses, there's one phrase that's really important. And that's, as he has said, as God has promised. So what they learned from Genesis 12 to Genesis 21, they learned that God accomplishes what he has said. God fulfills his promise. And that's in his way in his time and during that 25 years of waiting and among their mistakes they learned that God graciously leads them to the way where God has planned initially even in their mistakes and even in their failures during that 25 years so when we look at verse 4 in uh, Genesis 22 
it says like this. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. The phrase, lifted up his eyes. It appears first time since Abraham receives the promise from God uh, at Genesis 12. So the phrase lifted up his eyes, it could literally mean that um, Abraham physically lifted up his head and he looked up the place where he needed to go. But if you think about the place where he saw, the place where he looked up, it tells us more than that. It tells us just the physical way of uh, seeing something. The place was where God has told Abraham to go, to sacrifice Isaac. And this phrase, lifted up his eyes, it means that Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place where God has told him to go. So as I mentioned every week, our journey of faith, it's all about direction. You know, when you travel, or go somewhere you don't know. Um, you usually put the, uh, the address into the map and follow. And you can't see and also you don't know what comes next. But you have this assurance. You have this uh, confirmation that you are in the right track as you have set the direction. You have set the destination correctly in that map. And this is same. Uh, uh, this is same for our faith as well. So when we think about it, when you are going somewhere, you look to the location where you're heading to. That's how our body works physically. So when you walk, you look forward and walk to the place, walk to the location where you're looking at. So by saying that Abraham had lifted up his eyes and saw the place uh, where God has told him to go, it means that Abraham has set his direction towards the place where God wanted him to be. And Abraham didn't know where to go. But he now had this trust on God because he learned that God accomplishes his promise in his way. God does things if he says things. And his eyes, Abraham's eyes were fixed at the place where God is leading him. Even though it's the place, even though how God leads looks uh, incomprehensive. Abraham couldn't understand the thing. How could you understand God's command when he asked for you to sacrifice your own son? And that's a bond offering. And usually when you uh, sacrifice an animal as a bond offering, it accompanies, uh, it accompanies uh, so many things that looks ugly. And Abraham had to do that to his own son. But if you look at the verses closely, if you look at our main passage, we can see how determined Abraham was after he heard the command from God. So if you look at verse 3, uh, let me read it for you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. And also here, he said he gets up early in the morning without hesitation. And also, the length of the travel wasn't short. It was at least a three days of traveling to go to the mountain of Moriah. So in verse 4 it says, On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. So it was long enough. It was three days of traveling. So it was long enough for Abraham to reconsider what he was doing and just go back. But here, he never hesitates, or he never looks aside. His eyes were fixed to the place where God has told him. 
And now here, he doesn't try to confront things in his own way as he did in the past. But he just follows God. He didn't try to make alternate uh, solution and self-justify through it as he did in the past by adopting son, by making a son with uh, other women. But here now he obeys and follows God's way when it seems even though it seems obscure, even though he can't understand, if it's God's way, if it's God's leading, he just follows and he obeys. And God, here, by testing him, he wanted to see this from Abraham. He wanted to see whether Abraham is fully trusting on him. He didn't mean to lead Abraham to the failure through the test. But in fact, Abraham had has done wrong, thing, wrong things several times in his life. Abraham had failed several times in the past, but he, but he grew through it. God revealed himself to Abraham through those times of failure. God allowed Abraham to experience who God is, experience more of his goodness, experience more of his uh, guidance, his sovereignty. That God is leading him. That God is achieving what he has promised in his own way. So he needed to pay the cost in his life through the failures. But Abraham eventually through the time he learned who God is. He experienced who God is. And finally now Abraham has this confidence in God. Because of this confidence he is able to trust God with his uh, entire heart. And even though what God asked seems incomprehensive, he now knew that God will work and God will bring his will uh, through these things. So in verse 5, listen to what Abraham says. In verse 5, he says like this, He said to his servants, Stay here, with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham didn't know why God wants Isaac as a sacrifice, but he knew that God fulfills his promise in his way. He knew that somehow uh, God will make things work. So he says that we will come back to you. He doesn't say that I will come back to you without Isaac, but he says we will come back to you. The book of Hebrew describes the same event and tells us that Abraham at that moment, when he was saying that at that moment, had the belief that God will raise Isaac from the dead. He didn't know how and when God was going to do that, but he still trusted God that God will accomplish his promise, that God will fulfill his, what he has said to Abraham. So this should be our response in the test as well. Fixing our eyes as Abraham did, fixing our eyes at the place where God tells us to go rather than where we want to be. God doesn't ask us to sacrifice our son as he did to Abraham now. But still, God asks us to lay things down before God, to follow Him, to, fi to fix our eyes onto Him. So we do need to lay ourselves. We do need to lay uh, our desires before God. Putting our direction to God requires sacrifice. What God wants for us is different to what we want in this world. So we pursue so many things now in this world, but is God included in that list? Do we have that desire to live as his children? I said, putting our direction to God requires sacrifice. Are we willing, are we willing to take that sacrifice? Are we willing to lay whatever we want whatever we want before God, to live as his children. 
Do we desire? Do you desire to become God's sons and daughters in this world? That's why the Bible tells us that we need to take up our cross to become the follower of Jesus. To take up the cross, we need to lay down whatever we have now. To take something up, we need to lay down something that we have now. It will uh, differ individually. So for myself and for the teachers and for yourself, it will look different. The things that we need to lay down will be different. But are you willing to lay that down? This is not because we want to obtain our salvation by doing so. Salvation is not something that we can gain by doing something. But I want all of us to come to God with our response to the love that we have received from God. Now, sacrificing his beloved son for Abraham, it reflects how God has saved us. Now, God stopped Abraham killing his own son. And he actually prepared a lamb uh, in the bush. So Abraham ended up by not killing his son. But think about what God has done for us. God didn't stop. He gave his own son for us. He killed his son so that we can live in him. The mountain that God chose for Abraham was not random place. The Moria was the region. It's the place near the where Jerusalem would later be built. And also, it's also uh, the place where the temple itself was built later on. And also, furthermore, it's the place, it's the location where Jesus was uh, crucified. God has done this much for us. And He is still pouring out the same love to us so that we may encounter Him, so that we may meet Him, so that we can see Him face to face, so that we may have this relationship with God so that we may now live as his children. But to live as his children, to follow Jesus, we need to take up our cross. And when God tests us, we need to fix our eyes onto the place where God is telling us to go. And that requires sacrifice. That requires laying things down before God. It could be friend, it could be money, it could be your good results, it could be a university that you want to go. I don't know what you are pursuing now. I don't know which things in this world that you think it's valuable and pursue for. But I hope and I pray that you desire to follow God. And God should be the primary, uh, the prime, the first thing that we need to uh, desire. And I hope that this love, the love that God has shown us, this love becomes your motivation to respond with the same love uh, that God has shown us. It's, it's not just a small love. It's, it's a love that killed His own Son for us in that cro- on that cross. And it didn't end there. It's still continuously pouring out to us right now. So I hope that when we decide, when we uh, confess that we love Jesus, when we love God, when we confess that we are the follower of Jesus, I hope that you and myself as well, that I fix my eyes, lift it up our eyes and see the things where God has shown us where God tells us to go. I hope that our footstep, our next step, is towards where God is leading us rather than where we want to be. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today that you have uh, given us this message to us. We thank you that you have loved us from the start. You have loved us first. We didn't deserve it. But because you have loved us, you uh, you gave your only son. And we hope and we pray uh, that we now respond with 
the same love that you have shown us. Help us to understand that as we live in this world, we may experience, we may confront, we may meet some circumstances that we didn't expect, that we didn't want it to be happen. But help us to remember that you are still God who, who are with us even in that moment. And even in that time, that uh, help us to remember that it's the opportunity to prove our faith, prove our trust for you, so that we can fix our eyes onto you, Lord. We may not understand, but help us and give us your strength and your wisdom so that we can rely onto you in our daily life. We pray that you will walk with us and we pray that you will be here with us everywhere we go. We pray that you will pour out your spirit and fill our hearts so that we may live life with an uh, overflowing spirit of yours so that we may uh, influence people around us with your spirit, with your love, with the things that you have given us, Lord. So bless another week as we live and we just pray uh, that you will um, uh, bless also the people around us. So we pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we thank you for another Sunday to worship and listen to your word. I pray that through today's sermon and Bible study, we will be able to grow and deepen our relationship with you. Please use our offerings to further your kingdom and your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's close our service with Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, now and forever. Amen. That concludes today's service. I hope you guys have a great upcoming week and most importantly, stay safe and wash your hands regularly. Don't forget to join your Bible study through Zoom call and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.